Hey guys, Blob here, and I guess I'm a dungeon fighter math guy now. Yeah, I'm just playing with you guys, but this is going to be one of the hardest ideas yet, because there's going to be a lot of reading and math. Personally, I like learning with my face, but I've always had great reverence for the theory craft that confirms said great face afterwards. But that theory craft can get really difficult at times, though thinking about it, the average player has access to better tools now than the dark ages of Dofo past. You see, there have been many great revolutions in DFO theorycraft over the years. We had the addition of training room and damage report functions way back, all the way up to now with community apps and the Neopal API, of course, leading to everyone's favorite, damage calculators. And I honestly don't know how successful Kang's Hell Mode 3.0 designed for our current meta would have been if not for this gear calculator. Because so many players wanted to be special snowflakes with their literal names on their anti-homogenized epic sets, that they didn't realize the burden of choice that could come off of that. And that's a lot of potential combinations from beginning to end. Seriously? Giving players an obvious goal to work towards, giving assurance that your new setup does more damage, this calculator actually carried this cap's lifespan. Because now you have the virtual drug that is the constant positive feedback loop, and a shortcut for the average player to even just realize that in the first place. And admit it, when you hit that final setup or whatever goal you put for yourself, don't lie, you went to that sandbag hit the thing and thought to yourself, yeah, I did that percent more damage. So now it's time to ruin this the blob way. Let me show you why you do less damage because of this calculator. All right, it's time to start addressing the world ending clickbait. I'm going to explain why all of you use this brilliant device incorrectly. The most glaring issue with both the groggy and sustained reports in Don Class's calculator is the fact that both of them do not use actual real skill rotations like the burst combo charts of old. But I assume because of the ever-changing landscape of these self-reported rotations, Don Class went with the more efficient method of approximating Groggy for all classes. Based on a skill cooldown time plus margin of error, the calc just approximates a certain amount of skills being able to be fit in a 25 second window, while having other assumptions that are difficult to find documentation for. This is what most of the damage calc websites are currently doing by the way. Solving the problem of varying 25 second rotations based on differing speeds and cooldown gear with a catch-all method of approximation has a chance of being way off. I'm going to call this variance damage granularity. Basically, you already know what the expected DPS of a skill by itself is, but when given a defined time, despite the fact that you know it's DPS, if you're just short of being able to cast it, you underperform greatly, but if you beat the timer, you actually overperform. For example, the calculator is assuming all the skills are small granules like sand that perfectly get to the same result, but we're actually working with rocks. And the author knows this and shows examples of how this can be true outside of the calculator. Now tell me Blob, how do I use the calculator for sustain now? Well, that's easy. Just Run the calc like usual and press the same tab at the end instead. Okay, you should already know the caveats are coming. Please tell me you immediately asked. What parts of the sustain tab of the calc doesn't follow real world examples this time? Remember, in the grog example, the community hyper focused on 25 seconds being the burst format. But does sustain have a format? Is it 145 seconds like the base apocalypse cooldown? Is it the length of your class's third awakening cooldown? Is it 30 seconds like in Prey Raid? 
Or is it 180 seconds because I said so? Well, obviously you can't account for all of that at the same time. So again, Don Class has elected to use Assumption Ninjing to get a good idea of what sustain could mean. Because what actually happens is that the DPS values for each skill are just being summed together to represent sustain. And hopefully no one will ask questions about whether those values are possible together or not. However, it's now the part where we have to tackle the elephant in their room. How does the calculator handle cooldowns? Well, cooldowns per skill are processed in a more theoretical way. It's converted into skill damage. Let's say you mine stim, which is 20% CDR. This value can be represented as 0.8 times the current base cooldown of a skill. So the effective change in DPS by doing this is actually 1.25 times. But you might be rightly asking, that's great, but it's fishy that the old calc versions keep showing me time more as a top sustain set when everyone says the opposite. Because obviously, there's no way to 100% utilize this huge CDR that is given to you. Enter criminally underutilized damage calc function A, the cooldown efficiency custom option. This percent value here basically determines how well you want to model your usage of cooldowns. In our Mindstim example, 20% CDR is 25% skill damage in the calc. But what actually happens is that this 25% skill damage bonus is actually modded again by the value you put in here. With a default value of 70%, this 25% skill damage is actually implemented as 17.5% skill damage instead. And if you have cooldown efficiency turned on for groggy mode, it instead mods the much lower groggy percent when switched to groggy reporting mode. So instead of using 0% as a value for correction when set to off, with a default value of 20%, we get 5% skill damage now in the groggy report when set to on. You're actually expected to do the same with the other custom options, like assigning cooldown efficiency values for the specific flowing pieces, which have a default value of 0, and also assigning an effective skill damage increase modifier as a result of the talisman skill attack damage pumps, default value 15%. But you might be asking, how do you know what these values should be for your specific class and situation? Well, it gets very involved to find this out, but I'll spoil the fun here. The default values here are not accurate for the huge variety of situations the game has. And you can imagine, the majority of users don't touch anything in this custom option at all. That's a huge dependence on the chosen default values assigned by the author. So it's not surprising then that the community just completely ignores cooldown based sustain. And there's also other reasons too, such as boss mechanics blocking your CDR efficiency and also your current skill level and uptime affecting it as well. But later on, Don Class would actually manually nerf the CDR skill damage conversion to address this a bit. At past around 30% effective skill damage, the conversion applies another mod to make the effective skill damage go logarithmic no matter your cooldown efficiency value. It's still not a great representation of real world sustain, but it's a welcome change. But there's that phrase again, not the real world. Is it even possible to create a model for that? Well, here's where we finally introduce the blob solution. What's the most straightforward way of modeling a real-life damage rotation? Well, if this were any other game, you would have a combat parser you could pull off of to do math stuff off of. Oh well, what's the alternative then? 
Uh, how about recording multiple runs of the same boss and manually data cleaning the damage reports that come off of it? That's an efficient use of time, right? <laughs> Still worth though. Here's the plan. I'm going to run the squad mode of Beast Sirocco over and over again and use the damage reports at the end to model an average run. Squad mode Sirocco is coming in clutch again because the Sirocco fight is very consistent. From the time of room load to Roxy firing, that takes about 120 seconds. And further, if I use the damage reports at the end instead of frame counting, I can save a lot of time since the fluctuating amount of counters, no counters, and missed hits over all their runs will be averaged out at the end. These are going to help greatly later on when math gets involved. And the choice of Beast Sirocco? It's a very easy boss fight that has a lot of relevance since Roxy Red Party and No Roxy Orange Party go here very often. Next up, it's time to figure out how am I going to deal with the variety of options on Epic Gears? Because remember, we're somehow supposed to use math to do what the calculator did but applied to real rotations. Let me give you a simple example so you can understand what I'm actually doing. Do you know how to find out the difference in expected damage of changing between this item and that item? If you're only interested in what the relative percent damage difference is between them, then you can use the damage formula in this way. The trick is, you only really need to know the item mods that change as a result of this combination. So, just use the details tab to find your base case, add them up, and then the ratio between these becomes the answer you're looking for. Now, think bigger this time. In the same way you can find the relative damage increase with just one item, I can use the known values of my gear while doing the boss fight and the damage report at the end to do ratio analysis. That's a fancy made up word to explain what you just did, but with whole gear sets this time. A pretty simple, brute forcey way of approaching the problem. But oh man, that darn cooldown reduction again. We can't use this method for gear that has cooldown reduction if our base case is just generic gear. Because it's obvious you would play differently if you had any type of CDR. So that means in order to do this properly, we need to account for every time the overall play changes due to cooldowns being different. That means we actually have to redo this boss fight multiple times with different sets of cooldown gear mixes if we want to use math to emulate damage results like in our base case earlier. With that in mind, I've chosen the following gear cases to test for, and you know, like a simple start for this video. And get excited guys, this time we're going to use something new for once, and that would be chaos. Alright, alright, I get it. Of course there's a hidden agenda for why I always use chaos as an example, but what I really need now is consistency in run execution, and for me that's obviously going to come from my main class. So trust me, this is going to be good. Alright, before we can continue, we have to establish a base case. And I don't mean just gear, we have to clean up a bunch of skill build and rotation stuff in order to have an easier time at math later. So let's start with the first thing that it's appropriate to have a standardized set for, and that's the actual skill build. Now I'm not going to get into why these choices matter, since this is not a chaos guide video, I'm just showing my constants here. But as of this moment, this is the best overall build for every format we are going to be testing. And if you're wondering, it comes from comparing my experience and SP cost versus channeling time analysis, which I haven't released yet. But because of 3Awake, 
it's going to be forced to be changed in a few months anyway, so don't expect that anytime soon. Speaking of channeling times, let's establish a priority system for how I'm going to try to play consistently. For any non-tally shoe build, it generally feels like I do something like this. And for tally shoe builds, the only change is probably just more of a prioritization of the talisman skills like this. For the different mixes of 20% CDR and tally shoe, I would be using these variations of the base case. But we're not done posting all the constants. Because further on, talisman wise, we are only going to use ones available from Pandemonium War, since Exiles came after Sirocco. That means Tragic Rocket, Black Bolt, and Nightmare are a hard lock, even though Nightmare should be Rainbow Fantasia. Rune wise, too. I'm intentionally putting useless runes in to math back in more generic ones later. And finally, for talisman shoe purposes, Tragic Rocket is always set to 1, and Black Bolt is always set to 2 for consistency. So here we go with an example of the data collection process. So obviously we're in Sirocco squad mode. You just have to fight your way through up until the end to this point. I've also dealt with the issue of RNG boss encounters by forcibly spinning the disc by not fighting the boss but letting Roxy go through. And we just need a quick check to make sure that we're not going to get kicked out due to denial. Alright, we don't have to go back in there. Let's go in. Now a bit of a note of how I do these runs. Uh, I make sure to always run with double dealer and one satyr. And if I run with the satyr, at the beginning, I make sure to look at my stats with their buffs in the first place. And just to make sure, let's record the DI values and other parts as well. I also make sure to set all of them to not attack and follow me. Uh, the follow me part is so I try to get as consistent uptime on the aura of Crusader. And the no attack part is so I can deal with the consistency issue of the bot. Uh, applying the 60 Ellie Shred debuff. Alright, for all of these we're going to start with the burst combo and react if we have to. Like right here, he's going to move to the side. So, can't exactly do it frame perfect. Uh, we get the rest of our skills in and go into Awakenings because I saw it went to another easy pattern. Then we're going to go into bullet time usage here to get the rest of the rotation in. Uh, my philosophy on bullet time is to be used by the main damage dealer to guarantee hard to hit skills and you should pretty much use it as much as possible. And here's an actual hard pattern, mostly because the penalty for getting hit here counts as a super grab and makes you stop moving. And the rest looks like it's doing nothing. Jumps. This one, you either have to dodge it, or once you get a super armor skill or something, like for me, fancy twist or horde charge, then you do it. And we're gonna finish off this phase now. We're gonna burn all the bullet time, because we know that it's going to go into Soul Saw. And there it is, Soul Swap. And uh, just a little bit of bonus balling here because there is a bit of vulnerability here, but it's usually only accessible by classes with pets because when you're doing Soul Swap, can't do skills. So yeah, this is just me solving the puzzle and getting a few hits in between. Let's skip ahead. Okay, that took so long. We have all our meter and all our skills back, so we're gonna try to force them out because Roxy's about to appear. Uh, should be easy. He's not doing any hard patterns. Uh, except for this one, you, you're going to get balled here soon. Get a few skills off. Ball? Ball, yeah, okay, ball. And I'm going to Black Bolt here into other skills. Black Bolt first, just so I could get the delay finisher to hit. And Roxy. And every run ends with me forcibly exiting like this. Because I exited before the Grog animation finished, when we go back in, it's actually just going to be the beast fight again. So all that's left to do is cycle through all the different data that we're going to record later. Uh, for sanity purposes, we're just going to look at all the tabs and all the skills so we can confirm that we're actually using the same conditions for each run. And that's it. That's that's how each run is going to go. All right, so good, good. We're going to repeat this process to achieve a sample size of four for each format for this video. Admittingly, a pretty low number considering boss RNG can give one run something absurd like 
double circle laser, but the time investment blows up greatly the more you commit to sample size. And we arrive at post data cleaning. It's time to use math finally to normalize all the formats in a way that we can actually compare them with one another. For this, I'm going to use ratio analysis to basically nerf every damage report to the same clean slate gear setting. Now all I have to do is slap those mods on the averages of each set of runs and we finally get our first real result. Alright, let me tell you the story that this chart tells. Basically, all else equal, it shows what the affected damage increase would be on average if they were just added by themselves. But here's the best part of this clean slate analysis. Remember when I said that finding out specific custom options for the damage calculator is too involved for the average player? Well, at this point, I'm involved. This chart here reveals what those options should be. So our tests are showing us that for Tally Shoe, I should be using something a bit below 17%. This is because the calc is asking for the skill damage increase due to the attack increase options and not the CDR. In the damage reports, Tally Shoe setting on average added 0 genocide crushes and 1 more black bolt compared to base, much lower than you'd expect. But that's the product of the time frame you used and the massive invulns that happened throughout the fight. So let's say it's like 16% and call it a day. As for cooldown efficiency for sustain, the effective damage increase is 10%. We know that the expected damage increase for 20 CDR at 100% efficiency is 25% skill damage. So the cooldown efficiency we actually parsed here with 10% increase is about a 40% cooldown efficiency the default value for this is like 70%. And let me tell you, underperforming this estimate by that much looks really bad. So you have to ask yourself, if I'm parsing like this on a supposedly easy boss fight, that means there's something wrong about me, the class, or the boss fight itself that's dumping the effectiveness of CDR here. I chose chaos for this test because I knew there was going to be something crazy that would come from the results that no one would expect. Because in my own personal play, I can feel that there's something off about CDR on Chaos. Because, you know, up to a certain point, sure, you need it to do the hyperinflated two genocide sandbag combo that got the class nerfed. But CDR in general is bad on Chaos, because their skills play less and less nice with each other the more you do them. Just to keep it short here, here's one example. Just the act of genociding more effectively increases the amount of forced downtime on other skills, while straight up dunking your summon damage for the same duration. But let's not forget to discuss how the boss fight itself affects cooldown efficiency. Even though the tested duration from first frame of vulnerability to Roxy firing is 120 seconds for every parse, Soul Swap happens almost exactly once every time and lasts for 40 seconds. That means Beast Roko is invuln a third of the time. And if you add in the bubble mechanic, which consistently hits the player character and squad, you can see that Despite the easy uptime you get on this boss, the interruptions that do exist can still tank your cooldown efficiency. Remember, the longer you wait to use a skill off cooldown, the less that CDR matter to you in the first place. Don't linger too much in this chart though, because what matters is the overall mods that go along with these options for better or worse. And for that, let me introduce all of the end setups we will be reviewing today. For gear, in general, the choices for final sets we are going to math up are basically going to be the best non-mythic setups before Sirocco. That happens to be similar to the game Chosun 25 second rotation chart format. And there are a lot of famous gear sets here. 
Now we could do math ninjing of all the mods together to finally get what we wanted. The average damage you're expected to deal in Squad Sirocco Beast using all of my assumptions in the video. And we have some nice extra analysis too. Check this out, total awakenings were around 13%, summon share was around 7%, and Tragic Rocket plus Black Bolt together made up around 32%. Imagine doing this for every gear set, man. And now we get to the part that most people are going to skip to. Which one of these sets do you think did the most damage overall? Just think of what your preconceptions are of what No Roxy Beast means. Think about what is assumed about Chaos right now. By the way, the ones marked in purple represent the number one groggy result in the calculator and the number one 25 second damage chart on Game Chosen. Well, you did good? Oh boy, I did not expect this to be this way. Wow, really? The amount that the so-called number one settings were iced by other options? Man, just think, the default average player mindset is to just copy whatever shows up as number one despite the models used for them having huge assumptions, but it seems from my test result, those assumptions actually didn't hit. But as much as this proves the hypothesis of this video, this chart actually proves me wrong in a different aspect, because I thought the best set was going to be one of the tally shoe sets in sustain. But because of previously mentioned damage granularity, and the invuln periods even in an easy fight like Beast Roko, the extra genocides and black bolts didn't show themselves. The result is that even the more generic sets and even the burst sets became higher and higher in their rankings due to the fight being a long 80 second fight but then a 40 second Mario Party game. Further, Skill level ranges and obsessing over their correctness had huge value here with surprises like Ruination Annunciation being the highest on this list, while the War God version of the same Ruination set ended up being lower by 6 percentage points? Uh, but if you compare this to the number one calculator burst set, that's a set with Dimension Traveler which has some of its item budget in direct awakening skill levels. And well, it's obvious that on Chaos right now, their awakenings are doo doo. So it's not surprising that Dimension Traveler actually showed up poorly in the real rotation. And as a bonus, if you compare the calculator sustain tab with default settings compared to what actually happened, it just seems like the reverse has happened. The best 120 second parse was supposed to be the worst sustained one? And the best sustained ones are mid at best? Oh, so let's go even further. Because remember earlier when I said that clean slate ranking would let us have proper sustained custom values for cooldown efficiency? Well, guess what? I entered all those in as well, and this column for the gear sets still doesn't match the actual rankings of what we tested. Not gonna lie, these results inversing popular thoughts so greatly, uh, I'm kinda doubting myself, but not actually cause me god. Just, I can't wait to do this again for Third Awakening. Kang help us all. Well, what do you think? There's definitely a lot of things to nitpick about, so I leave you are intelligent commenters to talk all about them? Or did I create a blame blob moment by destroying one of the most used damage tools by all players and all servers today? The real take you should have is that this is an ongoing process. Tweaking the model and expanding to different test environments can result in even greater things in the future. And yeah, I'll be real, I don't expect anyone else to ever do what I did for this video, but I'm satisfied that the result proved that the philosophy of get good actually has results, 
Either way, Dofo is just a game. A great game that let this disparity be possible in the first place. If it makes you sleep better at night, you can choose to still follow the general consensus over the work of just one blob. But the rest of you red pills though? You have a huge amount of work ahead of you if you want to copy me. I've been ASMR Blob. Good luck, friends. Thank you.